have the surface way over here. I can group all of these together. And now they're all one group, and when I, anytime I click on one part of it, I get the whole thing. It's a group. It's a selection group. That's not the same as making them all one thing. It's still six open surfaces. They're just grouped together so that when I click on one, I select all of them. Joining is like the process of gluing the seams together. In fact, we'll call it gluing some seams together. Or welding. Welding is a common term for putting the seam of two pieces of material together. If I select this whole thing and I join it, join looks like two puzzle pieces stuck together over there. Right there. Joining is like gluing or welding those seams. It will only work right if there are zero errors in those surfaces. Meaning, the corner of this surface and this edge of the surface touch each other within a ten thousandth of an inch. There can be like no error <coughs> in the drawing. So, if you're in the practice of drawing surfaces as individual two-dimensional surfaces, you're going to want to get away from that practice and start thinking about sticking to just solid things the whole time. Because when I draw that box to begin with, it is automatically a solid but if I draw an individual surface, I'm going to have to be really careful about making it into a solid that I can turn. But hey, fun fun, here's what we're really going to do. We're going to make a box. It's going to be a little tiny box. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to make it one inch by one inch by one inch. It's a cube. It's so exciting. So when I click on that box, box is a closed extrusion. Great. I want to 3D print my little cube. I need to export it correctly, but first I need to make sure that it's that. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to export the selected object. So if I have a bunch of things in my file, but I only want to export part of it, I'm going to select what I want to export and choose Export Selected. Use that. Don't use export with origin. It'll put the origin in your STL, and if it's too far away from zero, it won't fit into the 3D printer's printable area. Because it'll put zero in the printable area, and if you're six inches out of there, it won't fit. So export selected. I need to create an STL file. Stereolithography STL. And I love to talk about stereolithography. It's like the longest misnomer in the history of technology. Hey, does anybody know what lithography is? Never heard the word lith before? Huh? Yeah. There are also megaliths and monoliths. Lithography is a common term for printing. Printing's origin is in carving into stone. <laughs> that being said, we need this STL file. I'm going to choose STL, I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call my box Bob. Tell it where I want it. Okay, put it there. Hit save. There are tolerances you can set. 0 0.01 is fine. But in this STL export options window, there is a checkbox I want you to always make sure is unchecked. The export open objects button. <laughs> if, you can, if you export open objects, you won't be able to print them. But here's the booby trap, you ready? The printer will make you think it's gonna print it. 
it will. It'll show you a preview. It looks like it's going to print it. It'll give you a time estimate, and it'll give you a material estimate, and it'll let you go all the way to the end of everything before you find out you didn't get that object because it was open. <laughs> so, unchecking this box will make Rhino check your work for you. So I unchecked that and I hit OK, and my command prompt up here says it was successfully written as bob.sto. Great. If I mess up this box, I'm going to explode it to mess it up. And attempt to export it again. Grab Bob. And tell it the tolerance is fine and everything's okay. <coughs> it will tell me that the STL file I am saving is not adequate for creating rapid prototype parts. It just told me I was inadequate, which I'm really tired of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll even let me export anyway. But I don't want to export anyway. So, what's wrong here? This thing is open. If your Rhino file is really messy, if you do this really, if you model really sloppily, if your things are two dimensional and weird, it can take a long time to figure out what's wrong and fix it. If you directly import your SketchUp model, I will, and attempt to print it, I will refuse to service you. The average SketchUp model takes me six to eight hours to fix. SketchUp does a terrible job of closing things right. And usually it requires the complete redrawing of the SketchUp file, which is really hard for me to do for you because I have no idea what the thing is. So I'm learning every single thing in your building to try to figure out what's wrong with it. You already know all that stuff. All right, so that STL, yay, it's an STL, great is what we're going to be taking to the 3D printer. Kind of. You are going to need to stuff in the bear lab first. We have eight 3D printers. And a whole lot of you guys. And a mess of upperclassmen and a pretty serious mouthful <coughs> of graduate students. Lots of people use the 3D printers. Grad students are crazy about it. Um, so they get really busy. Like, when is this due? Like, May? Hmm? Oh, you're talking about this yeah. part, so. Okay. Yeah, sometime in May. All I'm saying is that last week before it's due, it's going to be really hard to get your hands on a printer. Because that's the last week before everyone's everything is due. And you need to make a reservation. In order to make a reservation, you're going to need to come down to the Bear Lab and process your STL in MakerBot Print. MakerBot Print, I'm going to show you really quickly in a second, is the software that takes this file and turns it into a printable object. It's not fix your model, but the 3D printers actually read our individual layers. So there's another piece of software your STL file has to go through to make a MakerBot file. The MakerBot file gets loaded into the MakerBot. So, model the Rhino, export as STL, import into MakerBot print, process for printing. You are going to need a flash drive. You know, thumb drive, you know, the, the great data loser. Where's my flash drive? Oh, damn it. <laughs> Somebody's got my flash drive. I don't know who. I have this one. Um, no, but really, two weeks ago I handed someone my flash drive for a second. I haven't seen it since. It's got a bunch of stuff I really need on it. So if you see a flash drive plus Stansberry, give it back to me, please. This appeal is never going to work. I'm never going to see my baby again. You need a flash drive. The printers are in no way networked. 
The only way to load your file into the printer is with your flash drive. The flash drive port on the printers is sort of recessed in a hole. So your rubber alien flash drive or your big fat weird flash drive isn't going to go down in a hole. So it's going to have to be a relatively ordinarily shaped flash drive. I've had lots of people have problems with rubber monkey flash drives and stuff, so I can't get those things in there. Mm -hmm. You know, relatively normal ones. You know, although I like big, clunky, awesome ones, I think they should all be about four inches bigger. So we can keep them. All right, so. like this. It is not on the computers in the computer labs yet. Maybe next year. So I have two computers downstairs in the bear lab with MakerBot prints on them. You can download your own copy of MakerBot print, but we won't make you a reservation until we see your MakerBot print file processed in our faces. I'm going to tell you now. 3D printing is not Star Trek magic. <clears throat> Stuff takes time. So you know that little one inch by one inch cube I just made? It's gonna take about a half an hour to print. It's gonna take about 15 minutes to get the printer set up, another 10 minutes to take it down. So we'll call that an hour. It's gonna take about an hour to make that one inch by one inch cube. Yes, that means that your little building, but heads up, how big is your building? 2016s by 2016s? By how tall? Come on, give me your answer. 60. 60 sixteens. Oh, it's about this big. <laughs> That's yes. about right, yeah. It's a little tiny thing. It's not like a giant. You may want to refer at some point to how much you can do in the printer. Don't ask me how big the printer prints. I don't remember. I'm going to do exactly what I'm going to say right now. Google it. Anytime you ask me how big the printer prints, I am going to Google it because it is some weird number I cannot remember. It will not stick in my head. It's about 6 by 8, but that's not accurate. Uh, all right, so MakerBot print looks like this. I'm going to open it. Great. I'm going to need to select the correct printer. Uh, we have the Replicator Plus. That's my printer. All right. And I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to Insert a File. Oh, I'm going to insert this file. It's not a cube, I know. It's like a snake thing. In fact, the file's called Snake Engineering. It's kind of small, though. It's kind of weird. But the grid we're looking at here and the little box it's in are the printable printer's printable space. So that's where it's going to print in the printer. There are buttons on the right here. There's a Estimate and preview button, a model information button, a print setting button, an arrange button, an orient button, and a scale button. So arrange is about telling it where to move stuff. Clicking on that button again closes that. I don't need to tell it I want to move it over here. I can just move it over there. But you can import a bunch of different things into this space then have the thing automatically arrange them so they're not overlapping each other and stuff. Scaling. You don't want to figure this out after the fact. You want this right the first time. So, so the scale needs to be the scale. And right now it's in millimeters. But it's fine. I just want to make this 200% bigger, if that's OK with this thing. So everybody can see what happened. Hey, do you see that this thing floats mostly in the air? It doesn't lay on the table. 3D printers are like hot glue guns. They're on a 
sounds exactly like computer controlled hot glue gun. So what happens when you try to like write your name on a hot glue gun in the air? You make a big sticky mess, right? Because mm -hmm. you gotta print it on something. That is one of the major design problems with 3D printing is we need to think about this. How do I squeeze liquid plastic into the air thing? So I'm going to go ahead and do my estimate and print preview. I just hit that button. It is going to think about it. The bigger your file, the longer these processes take. Your cube would have been done by now, but my weird snake, the thing's going, uh, uh, the weird snake, I don't like to do it, a weird snake. And then I produced a preview. And it's in green and it's in yellow. And you see it printed some stuff to support the things that are floating in the air. It prints support material. The support material is the same material you're printing with. And it has to be broken off later. So hey, now that I've done this, I see that this is going to take about 30 minutes and require about 5.4 grams of material. That's not so bad. I can now make a reservation. So turn around to the desk and be like, I need to reserve a printer. There's my time. It's 30 minutes and we're going to go great. We'll give you that printer for about an hour. And if, it's due, if you need it right now and there's one available right now, hey, we'll put it in the calendar and give you one right now. Remember, there's only eight of them. And how many of us are there? A lot more than eight. So what we're gonna do later this week is we're all gonna actually print. I'm gonna come to your class, I'm gonna take you off in groups, we're gonna actually print little cubes to teach you how to set up a printer. Then you're gonna work on your models. You're gonna bring them down to the bear lab, do this MakerBot print thing, find out how long it's gonna take, make a reservation, and you'll export down at the bottom of the export button. And give it a name, um, making a snake. And it exported my file. And that file is a .makerbot file. That's the file you're going to need at the MakerBot. So you're going to end up with a Rhino file, an STL file, which is going to be called something weird on your computer when you look for it. We call it something like a certificate trust list. And when you click on your STL file, it won't open. You have to import it into something. So Rhino file, STL file, and then the .makerbot file that you're going to need at the MakerBot. Now the MakerBots. You are going to need to spend money. We do not charge you for using the printers. But you have to buy your own material. The small spools of material, they're about yay big, are 20 bucks down at the Bear Lab. So it's going to cost you about 20 bucks, but you are not going to use that whole spool of material. So you may consider sharing, but remember this. You can't put one spool in two printers. Right, so you can't share and use it at the same time. And you will end up needing it later. But to briefly agitate you, that spool of material is biodegradable and must be protected from light and moisture at all costs or it will disintegrate on the spool sitting on your desk. So it's a biodegradable plastic material. It smells like maple syrup when it's printing. Don't eat it. It's biodegradable. It's not non-toxic. It's got that fake Burger King pancake smell. <laughs> I don't big know what fake causes that smell. smell. I'm sure it's a cover up of the toxic fumes it really smells like. So, you'll need to buy a spool of material. You'll be checking out a print head, a build plate, and buying material. The print heads are 200 bucks each. Do not lose them. And do not break them. So now I'm going to give you the only rule of 3D printing. See, you notice I'm not making you sign anything, right? All right. 
but you bring it back broken and you do not tell me, I'm going to fine you the 200 buck replacement cost. So if you bring it back broken and tell me so that we can figure out what went wrong together, it will cost you nothing. All right? But do not return it damaged and expect to get away with it. The last person that successfully printed will get burned for that. All right. We'll go over how to take care of it and what to really do with it. Also, remember there's a lot of us using a bunch of things. Nobody can... We're going to check you out of printhead. We're going to check you out of build plate. The late fines on those are $100 per day each. So you will reserve them for appropriate amounts of time and you will return them on time so that the other people in your class can use them on time. Got it? All right. Otherwise, I fight hard to not charge you guys for printing and I fight hard to not make you buy your own print heads. But I have zero budget and that means that I can't replace them when you kill them. Printing is notoriously patient, de patience demanding. It's inconsistent. It is, what's the word I'm looking for? Undependable. There it is. Undependable. You have to be there with your print, making sure it is behaving properly. Otherwise, all kinds of terrible things can happen. Sometimes prints break loose from the table. And that causes the printer to just print into the air. That can kill the whole machine. That's a $3,000 G I didn't actually pay attention to what was going on accident to kill the whole machine. Right. So you have to keep an eye on them. I'm not saying you have to sit there the whole time going, it's going to be okay. <laughs> but man, it's Maya. Hey, Samaya. Can you hear me? <laughs> no. I'm trying to talk to you. Oh. Can you hear me? Sure. How many, sure. how many times did you print your building facade? Oh, ten times. <sighs> how long did it take? Uh, five Each to time. eight hours a piece. Huh? So five to eight hours a piece. 50 to 80 hours of printing. I like to call 3D printing a hobby. It's not an output method, it's a hobby. All right, it's a, it's a thing that you have to become intimate with before you become successful. And that's why we're doing this. You guys probably need these guys a couple minutes. What's the... Uh, Window, uh, so, you can keep the printers overnight and stuff like that. You just have to deal with checking out, reserving, checking out, returning, all of that stuff during the regular bear lab hours. So 9 to 9 Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5 on Friday. I mean, 10 to... 10 to 9. And like what, 11 to 5 on Saturdays when we're open now? We turned off that first hour in the morning, stuck on Saturday. I'm still confused. All right, so this making class, I'll be popping in and we'll be making cubes. Yay! You guys can do that. You guys can do that, right? You guys make cubes for me. It's a cube. You'll probably teach me even more awesome stuff than that. How much time for that? Cube. About three minutes. So I'm just saying, you guys. I will then come on Thursday and Friday. I need to take them to the printers um, in Hackers. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, you come in to show us how to make the cube, and then on Thursday and Friday is the printing. And on Tuesday and Wednesday is usually like 15 minutes.
great, it's not a big deal. So hey, don't let any of this terrify you. All you're going to do is check out a printhead overnight and return it tomorrow. It's not going to cost you anything. But if stuff goes wrong, really, we need to figure out what is wrong so that we can make it better. And if no one tells us, that mouse will sit broken on that computer for the next five years. So, see you soon.